Welcome to the Purple Party known as Purple Nerd Channel, home for all those who geek out and all things Prince related. On February 4th, 2007, Prince headlined the halftime show at Super Bowl 41, performing Let's Go Crazy, Baby I'm a Star, a medley of All Along the Watchtower and the Best of You, and of course closing out the show with Purple Rain, which he performed in the pouring rain. The show would reintroduce the world to Prince, giving confirmation to the masses that when it comes to performing live, Prince is a force to be reckoned with. And because of this performance, expectations were high for his next album. Planet Earth, credited to Prince and the New Power Generation, was released in the US on July 24th, 2007, peaking at number three on the Billboard Top 200 and number one on the R&B charts, selling just a little under 150,000 copies on its initial release, which sounds like not a lot of units sold, but these were only the physical copies sold in America. As in the UK, the album was packaged on CD with the July 15th edition of Mail on Sunday, a newspaper publication in the UK, which this publication sold about 2.5 million copies a week. Also during Prince's 21 Nights in London tour, all ticket purchases included Planet Earth on CD. The tour was 21 consecutive nights at the O2 Arena, and all 21 shows were sold out. And with 20,000 people in attendance at each show, and if my math is correct, that's roughly 420,000 CDs. Aside from all 21 shows selling out, and it being the most talked about show that year with rave reviews, it was financially successful with Prince grossing just under $20 million for the tour. Several singles were released to promote this project. Guitar was released as a single in Europe. Chelsea Rogers was released as a single in the US. The One You Wanna See was released as a single in Holland. Somewhere Here on Earth was released as a promotional single to radio stations in the US. And Future Baby Mama was released as a single in France, but unofficially received enough airplay in the US to make it to number 39 on the R&B charts. Videos were released for Chelsea Rogers, and Somewhere Here on Earth. A short video was released for the song Guitar to cross promote the album and as a commercial for Verizon promoting their Vcast technology. The full video would finally be released and added to the official Prince YouTube channel in 2019. Let's explore the music of Planet Earth. We open up with Planet Earth. Now what I'm about to say is going to sound pretty weird, but I always found this song too big of a song to open up an album with. With its bigger than life, operatic approach and its overwhelming cinematic feel makes it a really hard song to follow up. As in my opinion, it would be a better choice if it closed out the album. In the song, Prince talks about the day where the earth will be ours again, as in the Jehovah's Witness faith, which Prince was really deep into at the time, believed that after the second coming of Jesus Christ, the new heaven will be made on earth. This song started back in 2004 as one of the 11 songs that Prince, Sonny T, and Michael B recorded during an all-night jam session. Prince would add more instruments and vocals to the song in 2006 with additional background vocals from Shelby J, Marva King, and Bria Valente. Next is guitar. I love you, baby, but not like I love this guitar. This is another song that comes from the aforementioned jam session from 2004. This fun rock song has Prince just killing it on guitar as he's basically blown off a lady so he can go ahead and record as he's just not into her enough to stop his scheduled recording time as he values creating music over creating time with her. This song feels like it should be longer but from all the research I've done there's unfortunately not a longer version of this song in the vault. Next is Somewhere Here on Earth. With our first ballad, Prince speaks of the perfect woman that is still out there somewhere. And bet you by golly wow, Prince sings this song beautifully. Next is The One You Wanna See.
This upbeat song with an insanely catchy hook has Prince consoling a beautiful woman who keeps getting her heart broken by unfaithful men, and he offers himself as the solution, as he knows he'll treat her right. This song features former Revolution band members Lisa Coleman on keyboards and Wendy Melvoin on acoustic guitar. Next is Future Baby Mama. I never really felt the title of this song, but it is a beautiful ballad, as Prince corrects rumors about his past relationships and lets everyone know that he is looking for a woman to start a life with. We get the trio of Shelby J, Marva King, and Bria Valente back again on background vocals. Next is Mr. Goodnight. Call Mr. Goodnight, he'll make you feel alright. Right. This song has always been a mixed bag for me, as on one hand, I love the smooth groove of the music and the chorus with Shelby J and Bria Valente holding Prince down on background vocals. And I also like Prince's lyrics, but I'm just not feeling his delivery. To me, it's a really dated flow and it really doesn't fit the song. And I'm actually a huge fan of Prince's rapping abilities, but it's just not doing it for me on this one. Next is All the Midnights in the World. This song just doesn't do it for me, unfortunately. And honestly, I skip it so much that I totally forgot that it was even on the album. Because when I put it up against Prince's standards of music, I just find the music itself to be really generic. And when it comes to Prince's vocals, there's something weird going on. Like, Prince has always been amazing when it comes to going through the different octaves in his voice. Like, going from the mid-range to his falsetto, he typically does it seamlessly. And on this song, he doesn't. There's actually like a break between the mid and his falsetto. And I'm going to have to assume it was a stylistic choice because he's never done this before. And it gives this effect as if he's trying to find his pitch and not. And it just doesn't work for me on the song. The story presented is, is kind of cute as it's about a couple becoming officially a couple with some fun nods to the movie It's a Wonderful Life. And we do get former Revolution band member Wendy Melvoin on the mandolin. Next is Chelsea Rogers. Chelsea Rogers was this upbeat, funky dance track talks about a presumably fictitious fashion model and designer named Chelsea Rogers. Although in the video, you'll see Prince sitting between two ladies. One of them is his manager at the time, and the other is supposed to be Chelsea Rogers, based on the CR initial necklace that she's wearing. Rumor has it is that Chelsea Rogers was a protege of Prince's at the time, and he was using the song to promote her. The song describes the character of Chelsea Rogers as a role model as she handles her business, and she is spiritually sound as just as much as she is beautiful. Not only does our background trio of Shelby J, Marva King, and Bria Valente show back up on this one, we also get Maceo Parker on horns and Sheila E on percussion. Next is Lion of Judah. The Lion of Judah is referenced in the Bible as a metaphor for Jesus Christ, as referenced in Revelation 5.5. In this song, Prince questions his previous marriage to Maite and sees his faults in that marriage, which gives him actually doubts about his new marriage to Manuela. And he asks if their love can be as strong as the love from Jesus, as Prince believes it will require a love that strong to make this thing work out. We close out with resolution. How many people really want resolution? In the song, Prince discusses how everyone seemingly wants to have world peace, but their actions definitely don't show it. And like any common argument, no one wants to compromise or apologize first, which has him questioning if the masses actually want resolution. Our trio of background singers are back on this one, as well as our former Revolution band members, Lisa and Wendy, with Lisa on keyboards and Wendy on acoustic guitar. I don't know why, but this album has always felt to me incomplete. I don't know if it's the sequencing or that a lot of the songs feel like they were cut short, or maybe there needs to be another two or three songs on the album, or it may be all the above. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Please like and share this video. 
And if you don't mind, please subscribe to the channel. And if you got a moment, go ahead and check out my Patreon page. I will have a link to that in the description down below. I will see you in the next episode where I talk about a classic Prince album. And until the next episode, I wish you heaven. Thank <music> you.